And po, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, welcome po sa online service ng Church on the Hill Christian Community. So as we start praising our God, uh, may you join me and the worship team as we open this day with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Panginoon, for giving us again another week. Another week filled with blessings, filled with your uh, uh, providence, Panginoon. Thank you for giving us the strength that we need the wisdom we need for the whole week, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we sing these songs of praises, Panginoon, we acknowledge you, Panginoon, for your goodness, Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you for being our light in times of our darkest times, Panginoon. Thank you for being our strength, Panginoon, in times of our weaknesses, Heavenly Father. Lord, these songs is for you and only for you, Heavenly Lord, you are the reason, Panginoon, kung ba't kami umaawit ngayong umagang ito. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, naway tanggapin niyo po ang awit na papuring iaalay namin sa inyo. Just let me pray. Amen. Ooh. 
sa dakilat na ming Dios, walang papantay sa yong pagmamahal. Oh, itinataas ng kamay sa dakilat. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa lahat ng kabutihang ginawa niya sa aming mga buhay. Truly, Heavenly Father, that you are worthy of our songs today. Today, Panginoon. You are worthy of our praises. Heavenly Father. Maraming maraming salamat. was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness 
For giving us this time of worship, Heavenly Father, this time, Panginoon, 
and we can utter our praises, Panginoon. Lord, thank you for your goodness in our lives. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, for letting your Holy Spirit fill our lives, Heavenly Father. Lord, naway tanggapin niyo po, Panginoon, ang aming mga awit na papuri, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we listen to your word, may your anointing be upon us, Heavenly Father. Naway maabsorb po namin lahat na matututunan namin, Lord, and naway may apply namin to Panginoon sa aming buhay, Kristiyano. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord God, sa kalayaang papurihan ka. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord God, sa araw na ito. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning po. Welcome to CHCC Sunday Morning Worship Service. So, uh, to those po na hindi nakakakilala sa akin or baka hindi nyo na po ako naaalala kasi tagal-tagal na po natin hindi nakikita. So, ako po si Elizel Pubuon and I'm with CHCC. Uh, this morning po, um, ang topic natin is Divine Healing During the Global Health Crisis. So, actually, uh, this is a topic na sabi nga po ni Pastor Arnel is long overdue. And I do agree. Um, Masagal na po kung sinabihan ni Pastor na magsalita uh, po tungkol sa topic na to. Pero, he was uh, very kind and very considerate in my, uh, in, because of my circumstances. Medyo, medyo marami pong ginagawa sa trabaho. Uh, plus, nung uh, time po na talagang nag-commit na ako to make this message uh, that month <laughs> karoon po ng situation sa family that actually inspired some of the things that I'm going to be talking about in this topic. So, um, I hope that you can stay with me as we go through this uh, topic. Uh, but before we begin, syempre, mag, uh, bigay muna tayo ng papuri sa Panginoon through a prayer. And let's open up our hearts and our minds for his message this morning. So let us pray. Father God, aming mahal na Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat po, Lord God, that you have once again given us this opportunity to be with you and to hear your word. Lord God, uh, we know that there is a crisis going on outside of our doors, Lord God, but we know, Father God, also that you have kept us uh, in your care you have built uh, a hedge and a shield around us and, and we are confident father god that we are secure in your love and that in this morning father we can devote our time all our attention to father god in listening to your word right now panginoon dahil pinigay mo po ang panahon na ito para sa iyo at ang iyong mga salita so lord god i pray that you grant me the wisdom Lord God, grant me the words that I need, Father, in order to give and convey the message that you truly want your church to hear. Lord, I pray for those who are in their homes, who are listening right now, Panginoon. Pinagdadasal ko po, Lord God, na um, maging bukas po ang aming mga isipan at ang aming mga puso upang tanggapin ang iyong mensahe. Maraming salamat po. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, like I said po, ang um, ating topic today is enti uh, entitled, actually hindi po ito yung title na binigay sa akin ni Pastor, pero uh, sa so tingin ko po, ito po yung nararap na pag-aralan natin ngayong umaga nito. So, uh, the title that I would like to, to give this uh, message is Divine Healing During a Global Crisis. And um, my sources are uh, Matthew 4, 23 to 24. Okay, so um, actually, um, some of the some of the topics that I am going to be speaking to you uh, about today is also coming from a book um, by Ron Dunn. Okay, so uh, I picked up this book so long ago. Um, Siguro, my 
five years na po na nakuha ko tong librong ito in a uh, used book sale na po um, parang dumaan lang po ako and I was looking for something to read and I saw this and uh, I was so intrigued by it it was it's a book called uh, Would God Heal Me okay so dun sa title pa lang ng libro di ba parang gusto kong basahin to this is a topic that's so significant to my work okay so I read it before and uh, when this topic was given to me by Pastor Arnel um sabi ko parang gusto kong balikan yung libro na yon and uh, really this book helped me in uh, understanding um, some of the things na minsan hindi natin kayang uh, understand na tayo tayo lang okay so anyway um divine healing during a global health crisis um, di ba parang yun yung kailangan nating pag-usapan ngayon lampas na ng isang taon since nagsimula tayong ilagay under community quarantine and it it really feels like ang tagal naman na hindi pa ba ito mag-e-end hindi ba pa, pa ba ito matatapos kailan ba talaga mahihil ang land natin but this is a uh, this is a question that um, I'm sure all of us have been asking even I have been asking uh, when this when will this crisis really end? You know, we have um, dami nating naririnig na mga projections uh, probably by the end of 2022 or early part of, of 2023. And um, sa totoo lang, um, you, we, we can believe ev- all of those things na pwede nating makita, no? But, and, and the researches that, they, that come out, they can be true. They are evidence-based, no? And uh, sometimes when I look at how uh, different countries in the world respond, mm, naniniwala din ako that it's possible that this will go on up until next year. Um, we are praying that it will end by this year, sana. But the chances that it will still be here up to next year and year after that the probability is still there unless we do something about it anyway going off topic balik po tayo dun sa pinag-uusapan natin una-una I think we have to discuss sickness diba? Um, sometimes uh, yun yung pinakakailangan nating sagutin eh ano ba ang pinanggagalingan talaga ng sakit like where does where does sickness come from? Um, the book uh, by Rondon uh, has uh, four sources that he would like to propose as his theories. So, parang parang sa science din yan, no? Um, and dami dami nating pwedeng panggalingan ng sakit. And uh, actually, my education is based on that alone. You know, hinahanap namin kung ano ang nagkakos ng disease. Yun, na lang, yun lang talaga ang med school. Once you know where it comes from, then you know what to do about it. Okay, so um, based on his, uh, based on the book by Rondon, there are, it, it, to him being a non-medical person, uh, whose knowledge is mostly faith-based and Bible-based. These are the four um, four sources of sickness or disease that he can present. And um, I, I do agree, uh, being also part partly being, um, because uh, yung ibang reasons din niya or ibang sources that he describes, it has some scientific basis. Okay, so let's go through them one by one muna. Uh, the first uh, the first source that he names as the uh, source for sickness or disease is, well, God. Okay, so this actually we see in the Bible. So we, so we see it in um, Exodus 15, uh, 26, wherein God makes a promise to his people that if you are obedient uh, to his commands, uh, he promises that he will not put any of the diseases which he placed on the Egyptians 
on you. So he was saying saying this to the Israelites, right, during in and um, during the Exodus. Mm, also in De Deuteronomy twenty eight, we have here that uh, we have here it, it says we if people do not give careful obedience to God's word, then the Lord will bring extraordinary plagues on you and your descendants, even severe and lasting plagues and miserable and chronic sicknesses. So this is in um, verse 59 of Deuteronomy 28. So uh, in these two verses, we can see that uh, God permits, he permits disease to happen uh, in order to teach a lesson or to um, sabi nga niya as judgment or to um, kasi you haven't been obedient uh, yun yung yun yung reasons in these uh, verses and then in Job in the whole book of Job we see here an entirely different reason kung bakit niya kinukos or cause to or he permits disease to happen right so um sometimes we do not understand why god permits disease and sickness to happen but we can see here from the bible that uh god may be a source or a cause of disease may he may allow it to happen so actually after reading this before uh, my prayers became please lord god do not allow me to fall ill because all of the disease, it can be because he allows it to happen. Uh, the second source, according to um, Ron Dunn, is Satan. Hmm? So in Luke 13, uh, verses 11, we have here Jesus healing a woman who was described as um, for 18 years has had a sickness caused by a spirit later when he was criticized about healing on the sabbath he said this woman a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound for 18 long years should she not have been released from the bond on the sabbath day so that is on in verse 16 so here also in luke we see that satan can be a source of or a source of the disease or a sickness so it can uh, be that satan will inflict sickness upon a person but it is not right of course for us to assume na lahat na lang ng sickness is caused by satan because uh, even the bible would give you uh, distinctions actually um satan or demon demon possession this is just one of a source of um sickness as described in the bible and in fact uh it is in in our in the verse that we are going to be studying today the one in matthew uh, matthew 4 we have here matthew distinctly separating diseases and pains and demoniacs or demon possessed epileptics and paralytics so that means these are distinct sources of disease magkakahiwalay po siya so hindi naman kinonsider ng Biblia ng lahat ng source ng sakit ay lahat si satanas lang or demonyo lang so that's not how it is so another uh, source of sickness that uh, Mr. Dunn has uh, presented to us is our own personal lifestyle this one I could not agree more so actually napakarami na pong scientific journals and research is showing us that our lifestyle actually influences the kinds of diseases that you can have. Mm, I am very guilty of that. I surrender. <laughs> very guilty po ako dyan. Um, I just, I discovered two years ago na may problema po ako sa cholesterol. Kaya po kami nag-start magkaroon ng mga diet-diet ni Ate Che noon uh, dahil pangit yung blood cam ko at saka pangit din yung blood cam niya before so uh, we did that successfully for a little while <laughs> pero hanggang ngayon medyo uh, bumabalik yung tumataas namin cholesterol kasi yung diet namin ay bumabalik sa dati so our lifestyle will influence the kind of diseases or it can be a source of disease or sickness 
um, another thing, the habits of smoking, okay, or excessive drinking, those things, those lifestyle choices are actually disease causing. Okay, I, I, I cannot um, be more explicit about this. Actually, kung bibili po kayo ng sigarilyo, may merong, there's, a, there's even a law right now na ilalagay mo yung picture ng isang cancered lung or isang person with a throat cancer so that you can see the effect of smoking. Kasi it can be that bad. Okay? Um, in my practice in nuclear medicine, uh, very sadly, sometimes w the one we see is not even the one who smokes. Okay? Sometimes ang nakikita ko is yung asawa ng uh, smoker na naninigarilyo ng isang pack every day. Diba? So, uh, it's not only your own personal lifestyle that causes disease on your own body, but sometimes it, it, it causes disease in somebody else's, you know, your loved ones. And um, actually, even during this time, yeah, in our uh, global pandemic, actually po, diba? I, I can't, I, I can't uh, bear, but have I have to say, but sometimes the choices that we make also uh, influence who gets corona. You can see in, in other countries, tama ba na they don't, they, they refuse to wear masks because it's their fundamental right not to wear masks. Fine, it is your fundamental right, but honestly, you are causing the the risk for infection for other people to increase and for me you know uh, anti-mask uh, groups are making a choice a lifestyle choice that is very detrimental not only to themselves but to those around them okay so if somebody around them or them they themselves get sick because of it it is because of a lifestyle choice and um, sadly, I was just talking with a colleague uh, a day ago about even here in the Philippines, ano po, um, we actually have uh, highly educated individuals who do not believe that the coronavirus pa uh, pandemic exists and that it's just a, uh, a ploy for hospitals to get rich, for feel health, to collect oh if only if if only that were the truth uh, kung sana po totoo lang yon then we would not have to have this all of this happen to us kung totoo lang sana yung conspiracy theory nila na hindi totoo ang, ang COVID-19 but actually for us who are working on the fields it is so real it is so true and actually, even in our own community, you know, na nakakatawa nga that um, my own personal experience with COVID um, was not because, I mean, my worst experience with COVID was not because I was in the hospital, but it happened in the community, in my very own home. Okay, so um, COVID-19 is real. So let's choose, please, please. To follow the protocols, to follow the, to choose that lifestyle, because technically it has become a lifestyle na po ang uh, protectahan ang yung sarili, mask, face shield, proper hygiene, social distancing. This is part of our lifestyle now. This is our new normal, and um, opposing it or not following the guidelines can be a source of disease. And finally, the fourth uh, source of sickness that is, um, which I also agree with, is actually basically being human. Mm -hmm. Ang pagiging tao po can be a source of disease. Uh, I can give you several examples. Um, our bodies actually have a deadline. From the time we were born, our cells are growing 
and they have a deadline on which time they will die. My programmed cell death po talaga. Since the time that we were born, wala na pong original sa mga cells natin. Lahat po ang mga yan namamatay. And meron pong meron pong timeline talaga which we can hasten with our lifestyle choices kung naninigarilyo tayo or we are very bad with our diet and allow ourselves to have hypertension and cardiac diseases yung expiration date natin na siya shorten pa but being human actually already means na meron talagang sakit meron talaga tayong expiration date may time talaga na mamamatay tayo that is being human. That is what our cells are programmed to do. Our, our cells are programmed to die. We are not meant to live forever. And that's the same with our cells. Okay? And um, basically, nagde-decay na rin tayo. <laughs> ang hirap, ang hirap paniwalaan, kaya ang hirap sabihin. Actually, no, na um, kapapanganak mo lang, pero sa totoo lang, nagsta-start na yung yung expiration date mo. Papunta ka na sa expiration date. And, uh, but the thing is that that is what we are. We are um, mortals. Uh, meron tayong start and meron tayong end. And the diseases, they will come simply because we are human. Um, another thing is there is such a thing as uh, genetic predisposition. Ibig sabihin, uh, meron po talaga tayong, um, uh, what they call this, meron po talagang time na there is a part of our body that is predisposed to certain diseases. Uh, hereditary, yun, yun na lang po sabihin natin. Like, um, I, I spoke about this before, um, there are certain diseases na genetically mas prone ka versus yung katabi yung neighbor mo okay so uh, some some of us have uh, are prone to colon cancer and sometimes there's a trigger that when na trigger tayo ng ng um, chemical na yan colon cancer can develop but if that same trigger is given to another person who is who does not have the predi- um, genetic predisposition hindi siya magde-develop ng cancer parang ganun lang po yun. so being human actually is already uh, a source of disease talagang magkakasakit po tayo we are vulnerable to those diseases okay so what do we do then kapapanganak mo pa lang pala, prone ka ng magkasakit. So, anong, anong panlaban natin dito? Well, actually, the moment you were born, you were also born with something. Because God gave us healing. Yes. So, ang Panginoon din po, di ba, sabi natin, siya ang source in, in uh, dun sa start, I told you that God can be the source of sickness but you know, God is also the source of all healing. So lahat po ng klase ng healing na pwede mangyari sa inyo, ang Panginoon din po ang nagbigay nun. Diba? So kahit na sinasabi natin may expiration date ang tao, ang Panginoon naman ang nagpapahaba pa rin ng expiration. He is the one who uh, gave, gave, gave us these things that we can use so that this expiration date can be um, made to be further away, no? Or kung bigla siyang na-shorten, we can reverse that, okay? And provide healing. Okay, so uh, ngayon naman, let's see what kind of healing God gave us. Diba? So ito yung... Ito actually yung uh, yung topic na gusto siguro i-discuss ko ni Pastor. No? Anong klaseng healing ba yung dapat tinitignan natin? 
ano yung what kind of healing should we be concentrating on um so we i'm presenting to you again this is based on the book of uh, partly based on the book of uh, mr dunn okay ron dunn and uh, others are also derived from uh, other sources and of course the the bible so the first type of healing that i'd like to talk to you about is called assisted healing okay ito po ang healing that i'm very familiar with okay because this is the kind of healing that is learned in medical school <laughs> so it uh dito po kami so kumbaga healing comes from the lord and we are his assistants um, assisted healing is actually uh, this is the use of uh, surgery, medication, um, kung, uh, any kind of medication, whether it is uh, Western or Asian, yung ating traditional medication. This is the kind of healing na uh, happens because meron tayong intervention na ginagawa. Okay, so ito po ang klase ng healing na pinag-aralan ko <laughs> for all those years. So, this is where your doctors, your surgeons, this is where we come in, in assisted healing. So, um, assisted healing is also recognized in the Bible, naturally, no? Um, you can see here that uh, that uh, Luke, si Luke nga, was a physician. Uh, a, he was called a uh, beloved physician okay so um he would you you'll see in some of his letters to timothy he would be advice giving medical advice okay so doctors did in exist before and you know jesus never said you know don't listen to your doctors he never said anything like that huh <laughs> so uh th this kind of healing is um encouraged or at least the bible never says don't go to your doctors okay so never nang sinabi yon so sana po dito sa sa at sa CHCC ay hindi naman po tayo takot pumunta sa ating mga doktor kasi mabait naman po kami so far di ba sige okay lang po wag po hindi niyo po kailangang sumagot no 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 need to comment Okay lang po. Basta, let me just say that assisted healing is that healing na um, tinutulungan po ang inyong katawan na mag ng inyong mga doktor, mga sirohano, your surgeons, your dentists, you know. The people that you go to for healing, they are the ones assisting you and that is the kind of healing that they give. And this also comes from God, okay? So, yes, I'm a doctor. I believe in God and I believe that uh, everything that I have been taught was also inspired by Him and given by Him. Okay? Bigay din po ng Panginoon ang assisted healing. Alright. So, the next kind of healing is uh, natural healing. Um, ito po is uh, the kind of healing um, hindi po ito yung uh, ano ah, yung arbolario or uh, Herbalife natural ano, ano na yun? natural living products ba yun? hindi po ganun yun um, the, the body scientifically the body is also given a way to heal itself because uh, the body processes uh, chemicals no, na in a way that it will con uh, it will have a balance ang ginagawa po ng Panginoon natin pag meron siyang ay apa, Panginoon Binigay po ng Panginoon sa atin ang ating katawan with defense mechanisms, actually. So, uh, una, let's start with your blood cells. Okay, so God gave you white blood cells. So, these are the ones that combat infection. Sila yung ating first line of defense. Whenever something and some disease enters our body, we have those parts of our body. Okay, kahit na walang gamot, even without the assistance, of your doctors sometimes your body heals itself okay if um another example is wound healing diba pagka nasugat ka okay uh, yung hindi ganun kalalim na sugat po ah yung yung na scratch for example um yung um skin mo uh, th there are certain layers and if that gets cut 
you notice that it heals itself, diba? Usually, all you do is make sure that it is clean. Okay? Put a bandage on it. And in a few days, uh, actually, on, on, on that day, as long as you put pressure on it, the blood stops. Right? So, that's, uh, that's your body in action. That's natural healing. Also, okay? Um, nagkakaroon na nagpo-form ulit yung skin nagpo-form ulit yung, yung yung naputol na part nag nag-join back together sila hindi mo naman tinahi no the body did it itself tinahi ng ng katawan yung sarili niya these are only for small small uh, abrasions or small wounds okay kung mas malaki na po yung mga sugat ninyo Punta na po tayo sa assisted healing. Hindi na po kaya ng natural healing. Okay? So, there's natural healing wherein the body itself would heal yung wounds or yung some certain diseases. Okay? So, um, even in the animal kingdom, okay, you can see this also, uh, actually, um, siguro na notice nyo yung pag, yung mga aso pag na bangga sila, tapos parang may pilay sila. First thing you see, is them licking kung nagkaroon sila ng wound there they are licking their wounds the reason for that actually is because their saliva has a sort of pain reliever meron pa talagang uh, they, they have been discovered to have some pain relieving um, properties in their saliva that's why they lick their wounds yun po sa animal kingdom po and then in the plant kingdom actually you can also see that Diba, pag pinutol mo ang ano, sang, isang sanga, hindi naman yan tuloy-tuloy na nagpatay um, na pag tinanggal mo from the tree, you know, yung the, the tree from which you uh, cut a, or you pulled off a branch, you can see that part that you wounded heal itself then. And sometimes new growth would come from that. So that's the, the natural healing that uh, we are talking about. So, God gave all His creatures, all His creation, certain natural ways to heal themselves. And that's, that's great. Diba? Yan ay isang regalo ng Panginoon. Do, pinang, binigyan niya tayo ng expiration date, binigyan din naman niya tayo ng natural healing. Okay. And uh, the next thing, that, um, the next kind of healing is faith healing. Ah, okay. Hindi <laughs> na po ito yung mga ano ah, yung I am not talking about yung parang yung television evangelists na um nagpa pray over and then heal yung tao. Hindi hindi po 'yon. Um faith healing in this uh in this context is actually um by faith I know I will be healed. It's uh, more of a more positive outlook or a more positive attitude. Okay, that uh, causes healing. All right. Um, in 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 some in some ways, I do agree that this does help having a very positive outlook uh, when you are sick will help. So, totoo naman, totoo naman po. Actually, your your mental health greatly influence influences how fast you heal. Okay, um, I, uh, sana we are not one of those naman po na uh, I will be healed by faith na lang and then we leave it at that na po. Um, bigyan po natin ng chance yung assisted and natural healing to, to work also alongside with faith healing na po. Faith healing here is your, your naturally positive outlook gagaling ako. Okay? And it has been proven actually by psychologists that uh, well, your emotions, your emotional status does influence how well you heal, how fast you heal, and uh, sometimes even the completeness of your healing can depend on your outlook. Kung paano ka, paano mo tinitignan itong sakit na ito. You know, so, so actually that is kind of amazing to me as well because um, sometimes even those with terminal diseases, you know, uh, we can see them get up from bed and face the world because of their 
very positive outlook and that that amazes me okay um and then meron din naman yung um, I, I don't want to uh, say simple na sakit no kasi really disease is disease whatever sickness it is it is a stress on your body okay and yes there are there are uh, tears meron namang ranking ang kung gaano ka bad or ka ka worse yung sakit but if you have a negative outlook on your disease it has been proven that you feel worse your symptoms seem heavier your uh, the sensations are more deeply felt if you don't feel good if your mental health is in disarray talagang mararamdaman mo may sakit ako and they have said there are theories and there are, are papers that have been published saying that a positive outlook in life and and i have to agree and a positive outlook in life can truly influence your healing so it's your faith in the healing process also that can help you heal um but warning lang please don't leave it with positive outlook ha huh? <laughs> kung inadvise po kayo sa inyo na mag chemotherapy or mag paopera um hindi po ya advice ng doktor niyo yon dahil kailangan po niyang kumita. Kasi sa totoo lang, these days, hindi kami ganun kumikita. <laughs> and if you are advised to have this kind of procedure, especially at this time, ah, at this time po, uh, lahat po talaga ng ina-advise namin, if it is something that can be delayed or postponed, we will delay or postpone it because we don't want you in the hospital. We don't want you exposed to possible patients with COVID-19. So if at this time bigla kayong nasabihan, "Ma'am, sir, I think you need to have this surgery." Your doctor has already considered all of this. This is something that has to be done urgently. That's why ina-advise ko ngayon. Kahit na may COVID, kailangan magawa po ang procedure na to dahil kailangan niyo siya. Paniwalaan niyo po ah, yung mga doktor niyo. <laughs> Pag sinabi po nila sa inyo 'yon, paniwalaan niyo po sila. Dahil pinag-iisipan po nila yan, they are weighing all the pros and cons of having you inside the hospital versus delaying a procedure para i- to lower your risk of infection. So yes, having a positive outlook that, and, and faith that you will be healed is very good. But if you are advised to go through assisted healing to aid in this healing, to aid your natural healing gawin po natin okay so so far what what have i discussed assisted healing natural healing and faith healing so all of this actually combined all of these things all of these kinds of healing combined is what we really need okay so um wag nating iwan lang to just two wag nating iwan to just one no Sometimes the best combination is all of these three. Okay. And finally, and uh, actually more importantly, is divine healing. Ito na yung pinaka-exciting na part ng healing. Divine healing. Divine healing is actually defined as the sovereign act of God in which He intervenes. To heal the body without the use of human skills or means. Ulitin ko. Divine healing is an act of God wherein He intervenes to heal a body okay, without the use of human skills, no human means, no human knowledge. This is sovereign act of God. That is why it is called divine healing now how do you um, know if something is divine healing well actually we should look at 
how Jesus did it. Para we can prove, is this really divine healing? Is this the sovereign act of God? Okay, so let's take a look at divine healing as it is portrayed by Jesus. Okay, so um, for this portion, medyo marami akong uh, sources na gagamitin kasi he, he uh, throughout the gospel, throughout his ministry actually has been showing how he has healed right so it's one of his um, ministries it's one of the reasons that people were drawn to him and these were shown in a lot of the gospels repeatedly okay so um pag-usapan natin let, let's get, take a closer look at the kind of healing that jesus did in during his ministry so first off, uh, divine healing by Jesus. Okay, so we had, um, there are certain things that we have to see to make sure that it is really divine healing. So first, first off, it is that Jesus healed the most incurable of diseases at that time. Okay, so um, if you will look at, look at uh, Matthew 23 to 24, the 23 actually, uh, let's begin with 23 it says Jesus went through Galilee teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people news about him spread all over Syria and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases those suffering severe pain demon possession and those having seizures the paralyzed he healed them okay so this is just an example of all those things, the kinds of uh, diseases that Jesus was healing when he started his ministry. So, what were the most incurable diseases at that time? A severe pain. Okay, we have uh, here examples of Jesus uh, curing lepers. Okay, curing inborn disorders. We have uh, uh, a story about how a man who was born lame okay uh, another who was born blind healed by jesus so he heals genetic disorders okay isn't that amazing so he, jesus heals the most incurable at the time uh, leprosy had no antibiotic okay and they were shunned from the society from society and here is god by word and by touch just healing them these are the most incurable demon possession even uh, was described as a an illness na sometimes the people who were demon possessed were just left to left on their own dahil wala nang magawa ang mga physicians ng oras na yon ng, ng time na yon against those diseases and yet jesus healed them so for divine healing to be proven to be true it has to be against an incurable disease okay also jesus healed with a word or touch okay so this is the kind of divine healing that jesus had we have so many examples wherein all he said was you are healed and those diseased people were healed. How many examples do we have of that? Uh, re remember even the the woman who has been bleeding for years. Now, hindi na niya nga hinawakan eh. It was the woman who touched his cloak. Who was healed by the touch of his cloak. Now, hindi ko kaya yun. <laughs> I can do virtual consultation. Pwede kitang um, consulta over the internet. But I cannot heal you without uh, actually doing a lot of tests and doing, uh, giving you an actual procedure. Divine healing with Jesus is by Him saying you are healed. By your faith you are healed. Or uh, another way that he he healed was ask them to get up and they did by his word 
that is divine healing by the by one word by the word of Jesus by the sovereign act of God by saying that you are healed get up they are healed so that is how divine healing happens another thing is divine healing is for everyone uh, going back to Matthew 23 here we see here that the, Jesus healed everyone who came from healing we don't have anything here saying that um, okay he healed only those from Syria he healed only those from Jerusalem no what we have here in uh, Matthew 24 in the last part it says and he healed them people brought to him all who were ill and he healed them without exception they were brought to him for healing he healed them that is the kind of divine healing that Jesus was showing also Jesus healed without regard to faith and with it as well so um, here a little surprising siguro for some ano um, in in so I, I've heard it uh, in uh, some churches or even in gatherings of Christians na, um, even in gatherings of Christians ah, so kaya medyo masaman loob ko nung time na yon that uh, someone was described as uh, nagkasakit siya kasi kulang yung faith niya really uh, that I can't say nagalit ako no, no but uh, I was a little surprised that to hear someone who professes to believe in God and to profess he knows God to say something like that. Parang I was so uh, I was a bit disappointed, honestly, he, hearing that from someone because when you look at how Jesus did his ministry in healing while there were times when he did say that it is through your faith it is because of your faith look at this man this faith the faith of this man has led to the healing of this person we never once saw someone come to him for healing and become refused because he had no faith so what I'm saying here is, in relation to the uh, the point I was previously making, Jesus healed everyone who came to him for healing. So he never regarded the amount of your faith in healing. So it's not because he did not believe enough, that's why he was not healed. Jesus would have if you went to Jesus at that time for healing even if you did not have that faith or you think you did not have enough faith he would have healed you why is that can is that the God that we know I mean can you really see Jesus saying ah let me see to be healed you need at least 50% of faith from what I can see you only have 48.5 I cannot heal you that's not the God we know right divine healing is with your faith or even without Jesus did mention that there are people whose faith healed them but never once did he say, you will not be healed because you have no faith. So, pag meron pong nagpo-profess na kakapag heal sila, and then later on they tell you, kulang kasi yung faith mo. Hindi ka kasi talaga naniniwala, kaya hindi ka gumaling.
I don't think that comes from the divine healing. I think we have to discern that Jesus himself, who is the source of divine healing, never used those words or never even implied that your faith was required for him to heal you. He did mention that it's a good thing to have, but he never said that it's a requirement that you must believe to have to be healed. Because even in Matthew, he just people brought to him the ill and he healed them. There was no conversation. How much do you believe in me? So I hope as a church, we've been put on Let's not have in our minds nagkasakit siya dahil kulang ang faith niya. Hindi siya na heal, na matay siya because he did not believe. It's not really the God we know. Because I know that's not the God I know. The Jesus I know healed all who was brought to him. That's how we discern divine healing. And I think, finally, divine healing by Jesus is immediate and complete. Divine healing by Jesus is just like that. Di, hindi kaya ng doktor yon. If I constantly tell my patients, kasi um, my patients are usually cancer patients, so I tell them, the radioactive iodine is not a miracle. It's not going to heal you just like that. Okay, it takes time for the medication to work. At least six months, the medication is in you, starting to kill all those cancer cells in your body. Hindi siya ora mismo. Because although um, radioactive iodine is assisted healing, it is not divine healing. Hindi siya instantaneous. Jesus' healing is by word and by touch. You are healed. Um, the the man who had a lame leg uh, started to jump and walk around immediately. Hindi siya nag rehab, okay? <laughs> Did that go through months of rehab before makabalik siya sa sa paglalakad? Jesus healed him on the spot, and on the spot he was walking. That is divine healing. And it's complete. Ibig sabihin po, walang relapse. Okay? So, hindi nagre-recur ang sakit. Hindi bumabalik. Sa akin po, it has happened. Some very high-risk patients. I give radioactive iodine therapy. Uh, but still, during monitoring, I notice persistent. Persistent yung sakit. Kasi agresibo talaga ang ng sakit ng pasyente. So, I have to give another treatment. And we go through the same thing over again. We start to monitor again until we find na, okay, bumababa na siya. But divine healing is immediate and complete. The moment Jesus says, you are healed by His divine word, you are healed, wala ka lang sakit. Tapos na. No relapse, no recurrence, no metastasis, wala nang spread. When Jesus says, you are healed, you are healed. That is divine healing by Jesus. And wala na ring, there's no need for a second opinion. <laughs> Kasi pag pinigay na ng Panginoon, ito yung gagawin natin, you are healed. Tapos na. You are instantaneously immediately and completely healed. That is divine healing. That is how we can say that this is the sovereign act of God. This is God intervening to heal a person. It is usually from an incurable disease, by word or touch, everyone with or without an ounce of faith, if brought to Jesus for divine healing, will be healed and it is complete instantaneous immediately and without relapse 
that is divine healing. That is the miracle of healing that was uh, described in the New Testament. Um, sadly, meron po tayong mga nakaklim na meron silang divine healing. So I hope that this this uh, enumeration of what divine healing by Jesus is can help us discern really kung ano ang divine healing versus those that are in our modern time na pinapakita. Now, ang sarap, di ba? To sana, I'm sure everybody's thinking, then, why isn't God doing that now? This is the time when we need divine healing. This is the time when we need a cure for this. Well, there are so many um, proposed cures for the coronavirus. Okay? And um, it, it is used and it, they are found to be effective, but hindi pa rin talaga siya natatapos. We're still having new cases every day and the thousands we have deaths every day so why isn't jesus why isn't god using this divine healing to cure us of the coronavirus for this question i'd like us to go back to matthew 23 Let's take a look at this verse again and see what became more important. As Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the people and healing every disease and sickness among people. What came first? going through Galilee, teaching in the synagogue, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and then healing every disease and sickness among the people. Jesus' healing ministry on earth was not his main purpose on earth. Ulitin ko po. Jesus' healing ministry on earth was not his main purpose on earth. Because if it was, the entire Bible will just be about healing. Instead, we have here, even depicted here in this very verse, that it is about teaching, about proclaiming the good news of the kingdom before the healing. Jesus showed miracles and divine healing in the New Testament, in those ancient times when he was here. But he did not want it to overshadow the purpose that he was here, which is to teach and to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. So what am I trying to say here? Why are we not being healed by divine healing when we really need it? It's because our global health crisis is not about the healing of that disease, but the healing of an incurable disease, which is actually our separation from God. If you will go back, The coronavirus is not an incurable disease, right? We are not experiencing divine healing 
for the coronavirus, but we are actually experiencing divine healing of our separation from God, of our disbelief. What are my proofs? For the entire year, I have been so, so amazed, so, so amazed at how many of my acquaintances are now posting on their social media about how they found Jesus during the quarantine. These are people I would not even believe would find this kind of knowledge. Ito yung mga taong kasama ko sa work na yung mga kwento nila, pag pinakikinggan mo na, you'd think, wow, <laughs> ginawa mo yun? Ibang klase ka din ah. M- morality is uh, in the backseat. Parang ganun ba? But here I see them transform into vessels of the Word of God. And sabihin ko, is it just because they are feeling this loneliness and isolation, that's why they need this? But I've spoken to them and I've listened to their posts and they're sincere. And it's a genuine transformation. To me, I saw divine healing. Not the divine healing of the COVID-19 infection or divine healing of the pandemic. I saw a divine healing of the wound that separated us from God. So many people found Jesus at this time of the global health crisis. So many were healed in their relationships because they actually found the time to sit down and spend time with Jesus again. And that is just amazing for me because that is where His divine healing actually happened. The separation of us from God because of sin is actually a, quite an incurable disease, right? That only Jesus can heal. And He has shown that over and over again. And you, the proof can actually be seen even in our own church. Diba? Um, ilan na po ang bagong membro natin dahil sa ating mga daily devotions? our online worship celebration how many lives have we touched has this program has this um church touched because of that how many families have come together once again because of god's divine healing so for me divine healing is still happening okay it did not stop in the New Testament. It did, it did not stop with God's with Jesus' crucifixion and His ascension. Okay? The miraculous healing probably we, can, we have to look at in, with the sharper eyes okay? when it's happening in modern times. But the healing that is brought about by Jesus, the divine healing that is brought about by Jesus... Nandito pa rin. We just have to see what Jesus is actually healing. So, this is what I learned during this pandemic. Na, ang healing ng Panginoon, lahat talaga galing sa Kanya. And sometimes, it's even the disease that you did not know you had that He tries to cure. And it does not matter if you believed in Him from day one or you believed in Him on day 1,365. As long as you come to Him for healing, 
he will heal you. And so, this is how I'm going to end this morning's message. I hope that you can see, as I have learned also as well, that Jesus' divine healing is not the miracle of healing a person's health, physical health, but it's actually the healing of the spiritual separation that we have from God. Let's pray. Father, we bless your name and we are so grateful, Panginoon, that you are here and you have continued to heal us. Panginoon, maraming salamat tayo. Ikaw pa rin ang aming source of healing and that all of these kinds of healing come from you. And even if it is our physical bodies, or our spiritual health that needs healing, Lord God, you are there to heal us. And we are grateful, Father, that you have never left our side and you continue to provide us with your divine, sovereign act of healing. Lord, we welcome your healing in our lives, Lord God, all forms of it. We know that you are going to give it to us as long as you, we come to you for healing. We are grateful, Father, so grateful that this is a gift that you've given us since the day that we were born. Panginoon, tinataas ko po sa inyo ang mga miyembro ng aming simbahan at lahat po na nakikinig na may karamdaman ngayong araw na ito. Ngayong oras na ito, Panginoon, I am praying, Father God, for their healing. If it is a physical pain, Lord God, I pray that you ease the pain. If it's a crisis that is in their minds, in their emotions, Lord God, in their relationships, Lord, I pray that you make a way for them, Father God, to reconcile their emotions, to reconcile with their family members, and to their workmates, Lord God, and for those res restored relationships, Lord God. Father, if this is a disease, Lord God, that is terminal, or if doctors are saying that there is no way for this to be cured, Father, we lift it up to you. Panginoon, sa iyo nang gagaling lahat ng kagalingan, all of healing comes from you and it is through you, Father God, that we will understand why this is happening to us. It is only through you, Father God, that we can ask for your healing. Panginoon, tinataas po namin ang aming bansa. Alam ko po na it is something that you have permitted to happen. And it was also through you, Lord God, that this will be lifted. And we are going to trust you, Lord. And we are going to believe in you, Father God. You are our greatest healer, our great physician, Lord. And we are going to trust in you and we will surrender all forms of healing to you, Lord. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Dahil kayo pa rin po ang aming source of healing. Thank you, Father God. This opportunity to bless your name, to praise you, to breathe in and out without difficulty is a gift from you, Lord God. And we pray, Father, that you allow us to stay healthy, to stay safe, and to stay secure in your love, in your guidance and protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. Sana po ay may natutunan kayo ngayong umaga. Goodbye. Thank you. 
It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours And I will sing of your goodness forevermore. What is your name, Jesus? You deserve the praise. What is your name? What is your name, Jesus? You deserve the praise. What is your name? And now my shame is gone. I stand amazed in your love and I Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing. Of your goodness forevermore. What is your name, Jesus? You deserve a praise. What is your name? What is your name, Jesus? You deserve our praise. What is your name worthy? What is your name, Jesus? You deserve our praise. What is your name? What is your name, Jesus? You deserve our praise. What is your name you are worthy be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. What is your name, Jesus? of praise what is your name what is your name Jesus you deserve our praise what is your name we sing worthy what is your name Jesus you deserve Praise, what is your name? What is your name, Jesus? You deserve praise, what is your name? For the last time, what is your name, Jesus? You deserve Praise, what is your name? What is your name, Jesus? You deserve 
praise, but it